In this tutorial, we're going to talk about some of the different view modes, uh, and these are really, really important to kind of give you direction uh, when designing. So, when you import a graphic or a file, especially if you're not familiar with it, maybe you weren't the original designer, uh, or it's a, a client-supplied file, you, you just need to get acclimated to the design and see what you're, uh, what you're working with. So one of the first things that I like to do is I like to give my background a color, and that oftentimes will tell you a lot about the graphic. So in this case, the easiest way to do it is to double-click your rectangle tool, and when you do that, notice how it draws essentially a box around your workspace. From there, your page is selected, so that means we can click on a color. Now notice immediately, as soon as I selected a color, we notice we have a, a, an object here. We actually have a box that surrounded the uh, particular logo that we were working on. So in that case, I can delete that box because that's not useful. The other thing that I'm going to notice is this is just a black uh, design. This is a one color graphic. And it might be my preference to screen print this using two colors or three colors. Um, so that gives me a little uh, insight into how, what I'm going to need to do in terms of next steps to make this design production ready. Now, one of the next things that I do is I like to go to the wireframe view. So if you go view, uh, we can select wireframe. And this is going to give me sort of the skeletal x-ray vision uh, perspective on the design. Now, oftentimes when you go to this view, you may see sort of uh, transparent, uh, what I call phantom objects. So oftentimes in the design process, a designer may forget to delete you know, certain elements, or there might just be some foreign little objects that would show up if we were to output, you know, say, uh, go to burn screens or produce color separations, or go to cut you know, uh, a vinyl stencil or transfer. So we want to be uh, very aware of what a design looks like in the wireframe view. Now going back to the enhanced mode, I toggle back and forth very often to uh, wireframe and enhanced mode. And in future tutorials, you'll see how you can actually create your own custom shortcuts. So you can click one uh, you know, W on your keyboard, for example, to get right to the wireframe view, and then toggle right back to enhanced without having to go to your drop-down menus. Now, now that we have a perspective on our file, and we, need, we know, uh, you know how it's uh, designed and what uh, direction we need to go in. So in this case, in some of the previous tutorials, we've talked about uh, some of the tools useful in creating uh, sort of area where there is no area. And in this case, uh, remember this is just one color, what if we need to create a two-color design? Maybe the text needs to be red and the balance of the design needs to be black. What I can do is I can take the Smart Fill tool, where my mouse is now hovering, and this will allow me to create a color where there is no color. So I'll go and select red, and notice how my Pick tool has been replaced with sort of this crosshair. That allows me to go into this area and actually place objects where there was no object before. So you can see how easy it is to, uh, to create those objects very, very quickly. Now, so I've created a two-color job uh, from that black and white clip art, and I can go ahead and delete my background now because I see exactly what I have to work with. Now, what we also want to do is we may want to combine some of these objects together. So what I can do is I can hold down my, my uh, shift key, and I'm going to click on these objects, and if I'm holding down my shift key, it's going to select all of those objects at one time. So I'll go ahead and group those together, so that's one solid group of objects. And then we have two other objects here. I'm going to hold down my shift key to get this interior element and this interior element. And I'll go ahead and group those all together as well. So I've just basically taken all of the red from the file and grouped that together. Now do you see in that process how we could just use this as maybe the, uh, the element that we want to output? You know, uh, just to kind of give sort of a, another perspective on the design. And I'll hit Control z to get this all back in position. And of course the black, that's all one element now, so I can go ahead and globally change um, the color of that as well. So you can see how easy it is to use the uh, you know, color your background to get a sense of your design composition, and uh, how, how easy it is to uh, use the Smart Fill tool uh, in conjunction with Wireframe to really place objects where there were no objects before. Now one of the last things I like to do, especially if I'm going to present something to a client, is I like to double click my pick tool, and that selects the design I have in my workspace, holding down both your control and shift key. I'm going to go ahead and double click on the rectangle tool. And notice how it just drew a box around uh, the, the design that I have on my workspace. What we're going to do now, maybe this is going to go on a, on a black garment or a black substrate. I'm going to go ahead and click black. Now notice how we have that black box above uh, the design. So what I'll do is I'll hold down shift, and I'll click page down, uh, so shift page down, and I can move that black box to the background. And this would be a great way to create sort of a snapshot and to be able to showcase that design for your client. In fact, if you wanted to create multiple colors, I can go ahead and select this. I'm going to drag and drop by right mouse clicking and say copy here. 
and maybe you can give a few different variations to your client in terms of colors. So maybe we're going to do, um, maybe we want to make this really simple, do a one color, maybe white. Uh, we can go and just recolor this particular object here. In fact, I'm going to take the eyedropper. I'll go and sample that white, and now that it's sampled, I can just go and use the fill tool by left mouse clicking and fill in those particular areas to create some uh, some dynamic uh, dynamic look here. Zoom way in and recolor that. So you can see how quickly it is to present different ideas uh, and color variations uh, to your clients.